everyone and welcome to YMCA of San Francisco's Classrooms for All. My name is Alex and today I will be guiding you through a STEAM activity and STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. And today we're going to be doing some engineering and maybe a little bit of art here and there too. All right, so let's get started. Uh, before we do get started, you can go ahead and make sure you're in a safe enough space. I have my mask on coming into the room, but I'm alone right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take my mask off. And make sure that you're in a safe enough space to do so if you can. If not, you can keep your mask on and follow along with me. The materials that we'll need for today are very, very simple. I wanted this to be an activity that you can do with materials that we all have right at home. So what you will want is one sheet of paper, a piece of cardboard. So after the holidays, I'm sure we all have a bunch of cardboard at home from ordering packages or getting gifts delivered to our house. You'll want some tape or glue, um, some cups. This will come towards the end. If you don't have cups with you, we'll figure out some other ways you can do this activity or use this activity for some fun and engaging games at the end. And then you will want some scissors. Um, I have these really tough scissors, some, so you'll want something that can cut through cardboard today. And I also have an X-Acto knife. This is optional. You do not need it to, to do this activity. These are very sharp, so you'll want to make sure that you have your parents' permission to use this or even the scissors today. So making sure that we're being safe and following our house rules and then you'll want a black marker or Sharpie. I have a Sharpie today. And then you'll want at least two rubber bands for this lesson. All right. So today we are going to learn how to make cardboard launchers. So I know all of us really love to make things fly across the room and find different ways to make things go and to make things move or to make things launch into different areas of our houses. So today I'm going to teach you how to make something to launch across the room. So what we'll do is if you would like to, you can go ahead and follow along with me step by step through this video, or you could just watch and follow along at another time. All right, so let's get started in making our cardboard launchers. So the first thing we're going to do, and this part is also optional, you could always just draw right onto your cardboard, but I'm gonna use a piece of paper just to make it easier for myself. So we're going to draw out a rectangle shape that we're going to copy onto our cardboard and cut out. So the first thing we're going to do is draw that cardboard or that rectangle shape onto our white piece of paper. We don't want it too big, so as you can see, my cardboard sheet is pretty small. I cut this off of a cardboard box that I had in my house. So I want to repurpose some of the materials I have downstairs in my recycling. And what I'm going to do is put three rectangle shapes right next to each other across here that I will cut out. So the first thing I'll do is make my stencil on the white piece of paper. So what we'll do is draw a rectangle about this big. So I'm going to use the straight edge of the side of my paper to kind of work with the shape. So this isn't a perfectly even rectangle, so I might cut it out a little bit farther when I cut it out right now, but this will just give me a really good base to stencil onto my, rec uh, onto my cardboard sheet of paper. Man, I am getting tongue-tied just saying all these different words. Um, so what we'll do is we'll draw our rectangle shape. You only need to draw one on the piece of paper. We'll cut it out once we're happy with that size, but we don't want it to be too big. This is a decent size. This is kind of smaller, but that'll work just fine. You can make it a little bit bigger too by just drawing another one if you'd like. So feel free to make it a bigger launcher if you would like. You can use a straight edge like a ruler to help you with the straighter lines. I might even cut out a bigger one today so you can see it a lot better. So we'll make, I'll make a different one right here, right in the middle, and that will be my rectangle stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that shape out using whatever scissors I have on hand. Today it's my kitchen scissors, but those are work just fine. 
So now I have my rectangle shape cut out from the piece of paper. I'm going to put this piece of paper off to the side. I could always use the little bits here to decorate parts of my launcher when we get to that point too. So don't throw this away. If we always have some uses for the scraps of paper or recycling materials that we have on hand. All right, so what we're going to do is lay this stencil on top of our cardboard piece here. So what we'll do is stencil or trace around our rectangle shape so that we make that exact shape three times on this cardboard. So we don't want to use the full cardboard sheet. We'll want to use, we'll want to save some extra bits of this cardboard for the last part that we're going to make for this launcher. Okay? So what we'll do, lay that flat on top and then take your Sharpie or your black marker and then go and stencil or trace around your rectangle shape right on top of your cardboard. And you'll want this cardboard to be pretty thick. Um, the thicker it is, the easier your launcher will be at launching some of the materials that we're gonna put in there later. Um, so what I used was just a simple box that I got from either Amazon or from a gift that I got, um, but it's really, really thick and it has those little kind of little open spaces in between those two pieces of board that you can see. So it looks kind of like little squiggly lines. So that's the kind of thickness we'll want. So I just stenciled that rectangle one time and I'm gonna do that two more times across my cardboard piece. And I'm gonna do the last one. So I just did three across. If you have a lot of cardboard, you can make multiple of these later or teach someone else how to make them because by the end of this class, you'll be a pro at making some of these on your own. All right, so I just stenciled out four or three, woof, three, that's a one, two, three, not four, rectangle shapes right here on the cardboard sheet. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use my strong scissors and you might need your parents help or a friend's help that's a little older or if you're old enough yourself, please be very careful. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time to cut these out. So don't rush and make sure we're being really safe. So what we'll do is take our scissors and cut out each of these rectangles from our cardboard sheet. Remembering to leave this extra bit to the side so we can make the last part of our launcher today. So I'm going to cut out each of these. And what I love about these kitchen scissors is that they're really, really strong so they can cut through this cardboard pretty easily. But if you're using standard scissors or like craft scissors, just take your time. It might be a little hard to cut through cardboard. So your hands might get a little bit tired from cutting all of this cardboard today. So take breaks if you need to. Ask for some help if you need to. Sometimes I'll ask my roommates or my friends that are living with me to help me finish some things if I need extra help. So if, if you need help, please ask for it. making sure they're even. It doesn't have to be perfectly cut out, but just making sure they're all about the same size or as close to the same size as we can. So now we have three rectangles cut out. So this next part, you'll wanna watch first and then you can do it once you've seen how it works. So the first part we're going to do is put one of these aside. That one we're going to use in a little bit, but the first two things, or first two of these, we're going to do some extra cutting and drawing on. So the first thing we're going to do is turn one of our rectangles into a T. And the way that we're going to do that is very simple. We're just going to draw two longer rectangles in on the sides here so that it makes a kind of a thick T or like a bubble letter T. So I'll show you first and then you can follow along after. So what I'm going to do is draw into my paper cardboard piece here. 
so that there's two kind of rectangle shapes right here forming a T right down the middle. So what we're going to do is cut out those little rectangles that we drew on there and we're going to save those but we're making a T with this shape or with this cardboard piece and using these next parts for another section. So go ahead once you've drawn your T cut those rectangles out that are on the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors again and you'll want to try to make them even. It's okay if they're not perfectly even. Like one side of mine looks a lot bigger than the other. That's okay. It'll still work out just fine. We might need to make some adjustments at the end, but it will all work out and function at the end. All right, so we made a T with that first cardboard piece. We have one that's saved for the next piece. And then we have these two pieces that we just cut off, two rectangle shapes, that we're going to save for the last part. The next thing we're going to do is draw a little square towards the bottom of this piece right here. So we're going to draw a square and we'll want it to be about as wide as this T right here. So you can even kind of lay that T right on top and then mark just the width or the the distance between the two sides of the T. So you can mark that on your paper. So I'll show you how that happens right now. I'm going to move my scissors over. And you'll want it towards the bottom of the rectangle cardboard piece. So I laid my T right on top, marking two sides just like this to show the width of that T. So this was the distance between these two sides of the T. Okay? So you can take the T off and you have these two lines and we're gonna close them so that they make a square right on this cardboard piece. Just like that. So now that we've made our square, this is where it could get a little challenging for us at home. So please be careful with the next step we're going to cut out this square from the cardboard. So this is when you might want an X-Acto knife. There are other ways that your parents or you or friends at home that are a little older can do is you can open up some scissors and use one end of the scissors to cut into the cardboard too. Or you can kind of bend the cardboard and try to cut into it that way. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife and again being very, very careful and keeping my fingers away from the sharp edge of this. It's basically a knife, so being very careful. Keeping my fingers away and going slowly with this, uh, with this part. And I'm going to cut out the square from this part of my, rec of my rectangle cardboard piece. So with X-Acto knives, you can just kind of slice into it a little bit as if you were cutting a piece of fruit or something like that. So you'll want to be very careful to control the speed of it so you can go really slowly, making sure you're not cutting too much. Then you might need to go over it a couple more times like I do. And you can poke through a little bit more once you've made your initial cut and go through your cardboard piece to cut out the square. So I'm just following that line that I made and cutting into it. Keeping my fingers as far away as I can to make sure I don't hurt myself. And then eventually the square will just pop right out. So we don't need this piece. We can put that off to the side. So now we should have multiple pieces out of those three rectangles that we made. So you should have your T, your T shape. Those two rectangle pieces that we cut off of that T should have your rectangle with the square cut out. And then 
our blank one that we didn't do anything to yet. All right, here's the next step. When you're ready to go, you're going to take that one that we haven't done anything to yet, we're going to put that in front of us, and we're going to tape or glue these two rectangles right to the bottom of that, sh that rectangle, just like this. So we're kind of making a T shape over again, but we're going to glue these pieces onto this cardboard. So we're going to leave it like this. So I brought some tape today because I didn't want to wait for glue to dry, but you can always use glue, a hot glue gun if you have it. And what I'll do is I'm going to make it looped so that it works like a double-sided tape. And I'm going to tape that right down to the bottom side of that rectangle that we have left over. So that's one side on. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. All right, so now we should have those two pieces glued or taped right down to our rectangle, our blank one that we have saved. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to tape this square piece to the top of that blank piece that we just glued those rectangle shapes to. So what we'll do is we're going to line it up with the tops of those two rectangle shapes. So we're going to glue it down right over that. So we'll have some overlap of our rectangle piece or our cardboard piece on the top and we'll have some overlap from the back on the bottom. So that's going to be okay. We just want to make sure it's in alignment with those two cardboard pieces that we just glued down. So we're going to lay this one flat with the top edge of that rectangle shape in line with the top edges of these two pieces. Okay? So what I'll do is take some tape again. Loop it so that it sticks on both sides. And I'm gonna do two on each side. And then I'm going to press that down where I want to place the square shape one, right in line with those two rectangle pieces. So it's laying right on top of those two shapes, or those two rectangles. So it's creating this kind of extra layer of cardboard right there. And we have this overlap right here, and we have this overlap right over here of extra cardboard. So what we're going to do next, after we've secured the square shaped piece, or the square cutout piece that we should call it, we're going to cut off these edges to make it all even with it itself. So we're going to cut off those edges that are overlapping on the front and the back side. So I'm going to take my strong scissors again, being very careful. I'm going to cut all the way across to cut off that excess cardboard that we have. So the top part is now even with all of those pieces that we layered together. And now I just have to cut off the bottom. Great, so now we should have more of a square shape with a little window kind of cut into it. So this is three layers of cardboard layered together in different ways and then this will be the main body of our launcher. So now we're probably wondering, what are we going to do with this T? What's that going to do? So what we're going to do next is we will place that T right into the pocket area right here of, of that layer. So if you can hold up your, your cardboard piece that we just assembled, 
you'll be able to see through it because there's that extra layer of cardboard on each side from those two rectangle shapes that we glued on the base one on the back. So we're going to slide that T right in the middle between those two shapes. So it might be a little harder to slide it in, so you might want to cut a little bit more off of your off of your T so you can cut around the edges a little bit more. So I might do that a little bit so it slides in a little easier. So you can just trim the sides of the T to make it fit a little bit easier. And then you can test it out again, making sure the T can slide right in to that little window and you'll see it kind of go through where that window is right there. So you can see it go in and out. There you go. So now we have our launcher body, but this way I can't launch anything with this. I'm, it's not working the way I thought it would. So this is where our rubber bands come into play. So the rubber bands are what makes it launch different items. So before we add those rubber bands to our launcher, let's give our launcher something to launch. So what we're going to do is grab that extra cardboard that we have on hand. You can even use those little bits of cardboard if you're running low. So what we'll do is draw little hearts onto our cardboard piece, making sure they're not too big, just little smaller hearts like this. You can draw, let's make four or five. And you can color them in if you have a marker or you can color it on the white piece of paper and lay that flat and glue that to your heart to make a really vibrant heart color. So I just drew five little hearts. And what I'm gonna do next is cut those out to the best of my ability. It might be really hard, so take your time. You do not have to do hearts. You can do any shape. Um, I've done this with triangles before, so you can cut out little triangle shapes or you can make them little smiley face circles whatever you want them to be. So we'll cut them out. So I have one little tiny heart, cardboard heart right here. I'm going to do that same thing over again with the other four. All right, so you should have, you can make more than this, but I made five little hearts, little cardboard hearts that I'm going to launch with our launcher. All right, so we'll have our launcher, our launcher hearts ready and our launcher. And what we're going to do is take two rubber bands, one for each side. And I'm gonna take one rubber band first and put it over the T, so that T that's inside. So make sure your T is inserted into your square piece with the window, or that square window that we cut out. And I'm gonna layer, I'm gonna wrap that rubber band over the top all the way to the bottom so that the T is right in there and it's kind of secured. And I'm gonna do that same thing on the other side. So we'll have two rubber bands placed on each side of our launcher. All right, so the next part before we can even put our hearts in there, we're gonna to have to pull the T out so that way we can lay our heart flat into there. So you might need to hold it so that it doesn't launch without anything in it. So you're going to open it up so that you have that little empty pocket there. And you're gonna place your heart right inside of there. If it's too big, you might wanna cut it down. So I have my little heart right in the middle there. And then we'll pull back our T and then let it go and it should launch. So you might not be able to see it from where you are, but I'm gonna to try to see if it'll show on the, on the camera. So I'm gonna to count to three. Ready, one, two, three. Oops, it got snapped. Ready, one, two, three. Oh, my heart just launched over the room. So if I try that one more time, we'll pull that T back just like that. Place our heart right inside that little pocket. And then count to three, oof, or don't let your heart fall down on the ground. We'll count, uh, keep falling. All right, I'm gonna grab a new one because that one just fell to the ground again. So I'll place that heart in there 
and then we'll count to three and launch the heart across the room. One, two, three. So you want to make sure you can let it go fast. So when I was showing you, it went a little slower. So we can try this over and over again. But either way, slow or fast, you'll still launch that heart across some part of the room. All right, now the last part of this activity is how you can turn it into a game with you and your friends. So if you want to make multiple of these for you and your family or friends or siblings or whoever you're around today, you can grab some plain cups like plastic or paper cups. Today I brought some plastic cups with me today. And what we'll do, I'm going to move all this stuff over to the side, is we'll set up a little obstacle of cups. So we can stack them up on one side. So this is even fun in itself if you've ever tried a little cup stacking challenge. So I made a little tower of cups and what you can do is go on the opposite side of a table, grab your launchers, your little hearts that you cut out, and try to knock off some of these cups off of the table or off of, off of the stack that they're on right now. So what I'm going to do is load up my launcher, put my heart in there, make sure it's sitting there, and then count to three from across the room. I'm going to try to launch this a little bit faster this time. Ready? One, two, three. Oops, it went right across the cup. So let's try this one more time, see if I can knock over a cup. Ready? One, two, three. So it might need to be a little bit stronger. You can use some lighter cups. It definitely hit one of these, so you can try it over and over again and try to launch your little hearts across the room and knock off some of these cups so you can turn this into a game at home. You can have the higher points on the top or on the bottom. You can try to launch your hearts into the cups and see how to do that. I'm going to place this one back up and see what happens one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Oops. One. Ready? One, two, three. Ah, it missed again. But you get the point. You can try this with some paper cups. It might be a lot easier with those because plastic cups might be pretty heavy. But you can try this at home with any materials that you have. You can stack up some other things at home that are a little lighter and try to make a little challenge for yourself or for you and your family to do for a game night at home. So thank you so much for joining me in creating these amazing cardboard launchers. We just did some engineering today with using materials that we have right at home, such as the cardboard from our recycling bins or scissors from our kitchen or from our craft box and tape that we would have hanging out at home. You can use this to be, play games at home or to launch them across outside or play a game with your friends or your family for game night. So this is a perfect way to use STEAM in your everyday lives and turn it into something fun to do at home with your friends and family. So thank you all so much for joining me for STEAM with Alex. If you want to see more classes, you can go to ymcasf.org slash classrooms for all, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you all so much and have a great day. Bye. Did you know that YMCA of San Francisco never closed? When shelter in place happened, we could no longer provide in-person programming. We quickly shifted to provide youth and family programming virtually. As early as April, we started providing on-demand activities in our YMCA of San Francisco YouTube channel. For this video, we're gonna be making a geodesic dome. Today, we're going to be making a hovercraft. The science around this activity is really awesome. In addition, we have a regular schedule of activities for our youth and families to join live. We feature read-alouds, yoga, family Zumba, arts and crafts, drawing clubs, and more. 
so don't miss out on our virtual youth and family offerings. Visit www.ymcasf.org for more info and class schedules.